Um, a bit of a non-specific one this, um, you know, everyone's favourite which is six mark questions when they come up on the exams, I know how much everybody loves them so I'm just going to talk a little bit about it and, and some of the techniques you can use. Now these questions, um, the problem really comes down to, there's a couple of different things why people have problems with them. Uh, one is, is actually decoding the question. So people will read the question and think, I'm not really sure what that means. And they end up writing nothing whatsoever. Um, and, you know, leaving it blank and thinking, oh, I don't even know what that is. Um, the second problem part is, is knowing um, how much to write. And, and people don't write enough. Um, you know, there are six marks available. The way it's, it's actually marked, and hopefully you've seen one of these mark schemes, um, it, there's kind of three parts to it. Um, and for each part you can be scored... Um, that's, probably not, that's probably a better way of putting it like that, two, four, six. Okay. So you can get a few bits and right and you can get two, or you can get more bits right and get four marks, or you can get all the bits right and you get six marks. Now to be honest, where it says um, you, you're marked on your spelling, your punctuation, and grammar, if you're managing to write six things um, coherently, you're probably going to be okay for your spelling, punctuation, and grammar. I, I would advise not to worry about it. Um, it's not something, you know, people start panicking, they go, oh, I've got to write it like this and the right and the way, and they simply don't write enough. Uh, and that's when you drop marks. You're better off putting more stuff in. So what I would advise to, to, uh, as a strategy for getting around these things, try and just get, and I know it's, it's difficult because in an exam, um, it, it's a different situation. But, you know, if, if the question comes up, look at what the question is about. So if the question was... Um, was about antibiotics, okay? And it said blah 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 antibiotics. Okay, they're going to ask you about antibiotics and think, what do I already know about antibiotics? Where do they come from? Uh, what are they used for? And, and use some time just to, you know, mind map if you like, or whatever you're going to call it, brainstorm. Just write as much down as you can think of. It doesn't matter if it's individual words. You can always go back and cross them out. And spending thirty seconds writing stuff out is going to give you more of a chance to get more stuff in. You know, the secret to these questions is it's just writing more. It's not a case of presenting an argument or anything. It's just getting as much in as you can. One of the problems with this decoding part is what people tend to do is they think, oh, I know what this is about. It's a question to do with that. And they get fixed onto one little part of it and they just write about that. And if you've decoded it in the wrong way, if you guessed the, what in the wrong way what the question's about, you lose a lot of marks. So I'd, I'd strongly suggest this idea of just putting things down as much as you can beforehand. If it helps, you know, you can have this, um, this idea of the um, who, what, where, when, how, why, um, where, uh, what have I gone? Who, why, when, what, how, there we go, the, the, the six W's. Um, and they won't all be applicable, so antibiotics, what are they? Okay, they, they're, they're chemicals that can kill um, bacteria off, but not viruses. You know, who? Okay, I've got, Alexander Fleming discovered them in Florian Chen. When? Okay, they were discovered in, in the 20s. Is who and when going to be relevant? Probably not. I can probably ignore them. Why? Why do they work? Well, they kill bacteria. Where do they work? In the body. How do they work? Okay. But it, it's giving me a bit of structure about what kind of things I can write down. And... You know, that's not going to change. You can always apply that to any question. Okay? Um, and it just makes you think a little bit more before you get involved in it. Um, you know, you, oh, hang on. What? I've just remembered antibiotic resistance. I'll put resistance down. You're thinking about more things to put in. Um, sometimes you will get a comparative question where it's asking you to compare things. Um, for example, it might ask you about an argument. That's a comparative. Arguments are saying pro and con, for and against. Uh, a tip for this one, um, this is something called areas of discourse. And again, you, you can very quickly do this. I'm just going to tick it across. I could put yes and no or for and against. It doesn't matter what it is. What kind of things could I have an argument about? So let's say I'm thinking that the, the antibiotics are saying, should we be using antibiotics? There are different things I could argue about. For example, I could get arguments about the cost 
no we shouldn't be using antibiotics too much because it costs too much money yes we should use them because the cost of treating people comes down you see what i'm doing there is i'm getting two sides of an argument i could have a a medical thing yes we should be using them because it cures people diseases no we shouldn't be using them as much because it gets to antibiotic resistance and so i'm getting for and against i'm picking things up um, other areas of dis discourse are things like ethical questions is it right or wrong can you think of an argument for each one and again that kind of thing just plan it for a few I know it's hard to, it's easy, easy to say, but this is the approach that you can take. Um, you know, there are other things like, um, you can talk about uh, aesthetics, for example, which is, is, are things, do things look good? It doesn't really apply very much to uh, this antibiotics argument, but you, you could have, you know, that's an argument to, that you, you could bring in. This idea of planning things before you dive in will pick up more marks. You, know, the, you see it a lot when you mark these questions people start writing and they've not thought and you know you've got whatever how many lines it is and people do their thinking as they write so they go blah blah well one of the things with antibiotics that i'm going to talk about today is one of the problems and the problem and suddenly they've filled the entire space up and not said anything could you do it for example just doing bullet points yeah yeah you can um you might not get your full six marks, but if it means you pick up four or five rather than two, then, then do that. It, it, it makes sense. You've got to make that judgment. Um, but these are just a couple of ideas about what you can do to approach these things. Yes, when you get better at them, and when you get used to them, you will start to see, oh, I could construct it that way. But in the, the heat of an exam, um, it, it's difficult to do. It's really difficult to write a six mark quality answer by really really thinking about it and you might be better off using some of these little techniques